guys. How y'all doing? I got some good stuff for you tonight. Um, it took me a couple of days. I haven't been recording because, unfortunately, we've got a cat that's gone into heat, so she won't shut up. So, in between the intermittent and yelling, I've kind of been hard-pressed to record anything. But I got something good for you tonight. Uh, the follow-up between uh, last time. If you don't need some context for this, please read the segment that I did, the audio segment I did for the Burfoot Audio Project called Stride versus Raceland or Raceland versus Stride, whichever it pops up. Okay, listen to that for context first. Okay, um, this part is basically the Planescape content. Now, um, as you know, Wizards of the Coast still owns Summit Planescape. This is based on 2E Planescape, okay? Um, at the, well, just to show you, if you'll listen to what happens in Raceland versus Stride, this will give you some context for this, okay? But uh, Taz inevitably ends up in Sigil, okay? Now, you seem to be, I know you're sitting here asking, how in the hell can Paladin and Fakesis, his avatars, run around Sigil and not get mazed? Well... Actually, that's the, that, that's the tricky part, okay? Uh, they can go into Sigil, but they have to behave, okay, as it's implied here. Anyway, uh, read this. Yes, I haven't pulled anything out of my butt. This is all 2E stuff. Um, take a look at some of it, okay? Um, well, I'll just play it for you, and you can decide for yourself. Okay, guys, let's get this rolling here. Hold on just a second here, and let me get something up here. Which one do I want to play first? Okay, we're going to play, we're going to do, yeah, this one. Okay, yep, okay. All right. All right, let's pull this up here. All righty, we're good, we're good, we're good. All right, hold on just a second here, guys. Let me get it selected. Bada bada bam, okay. Boom! Hada hada hoo. There you go. Okay. We're doing good, guys. Alright, hold on just a second here. Alright. And. Tars, don't let go. Tannis voice, then Larana, the flint. said the same thing. Don't let go. I'm trying. I'm okay, really. Oh my, I feel a little bit queer and not at all alright just now. Tasselhoff squeaked, but the obvious was far from okay. I had this dream once, really bad dream in tar size. Sylvanesti. Wait, I never went to Sylvanesti, did I? It was haunted. Tika, she fell. I was opening a lock. I got in a hurry, and this pin went in my finger. It didn't hurt, but then it did, and I felt my heart doing just like it's doing now. Oh, dear. Tars blinked, and quizzically thought to himself how he could possibly let go of anything because he really wasn't holding onto anything in the first place. That insinuation also galled him because his companions over the decades had constantly shouted at him, Tars, let go of that. Tars, put that down. Tars. Put that back. So much that it was normal conversation for every human or demi-human that wasn't a kendo to regard him with at least every five minutes in a conversation, no matter what he was doing. At this present time, he wasn't doing anything but lying on his side on a cobble street. Only this street cobble felt weird to the touch like it was vibrating ever so slightly and it was warm. But the surrounding area around him wasn't. It was raining heavily. He was laying flat on his face staring into a large puddle of water, the reflections of two figures standing over him, but they weren't. The ones telling him to hold on or not let go, no, they were having a very intense and heated but subtly quiet argument, and regardless of whether Tasselhoff felt like his brains were leaking out into his shoes, there was no indication they gave brain vermin's ass about his condition. He tilted his head to notice he was in an alleyway, and across that he could see what looked like a street, all going uphill. It even felt like the ground he was lying on was on an incline oddly enough. The puddle in front of him wasn't on flat ground either, but it was full of standing water and wasn't emptying at that angle. 
How could that be possible if everything is slightly going uphill? There were cobbles to indicate a street, the place stunk like an alleyway maybe he was in a city somewhere. Any place was better than Strad's castle. Tars could honestly say he never wanted to go back to that stuffy, arrogant bully's home anytime soon if he could avoid it. He'd never detested a human so much in his life. What a lying piece of refuse. Wait, oh dear. Fisbon was going to be irritated that Tars had accidentally snapped the stem off of Halfling's pipe that he'd borrowed from Uncle Trapspringer even though it was originally meant as a gift for Fisbon. Tars had just forgotten until he'd been reminded in Magda's Vistani camp that he had it and to light the beacon, my boy. I'll be able to see it sure enough from where I am. I can't do much here to bring you home. You've got one portal key. That Raceland fellow is bad news. Don't expect him to help you out. That's not really his job or concern at this point, but he's the only other person that can get you out of there if he's inclined to do so. Once you've found Tannis and Larana, get out of there as quick as you can. You might not be able to save Ticklemop. She liked that nasty dwarf as Rail have been corrupted by the negative planes and have been in Sithicus far too long. That holy sack tied with reins will work, but she will most likely try to kill you, you know, spare the grief and end her torment if you must. That creature's own who pack you possess is enough to end her torment. That poor creature, I regret it so. I let it wander lost into the mists of Raven Loft. I failed. I am so sorry. Tickle Mop. Tasselhoff, you must understand she can only be free of Barovia if her chain is. Severed. She's trapped. She wanted to go home. Strahd lied to her. Soft lied to her. The mists of Ravenloft hold ye in their cold talons. I don't feel so worried since you kenders are immune to fear. And it's one tool that big bully Von Zarevich thinks he can use on unwary travellers from MY neck of the woods. HMMPH. We'll show him, but first things first we must attempt to bring you home. That pipe. This pipe. Tars asked sheepishly. Oh I am so sorry Fisbon. Uncle Trapspringer said I was supposed to give this to you after we found it in the chest we finally dug up from the Spelljammer's wreckage. I wasn't going to sell it or give it away Fisbon, I don't even smoke. Never mind that, that thing is called a pipe of antidiluvian knowledge. It's a very powerful artifact, not usually for Ken Durr, it's meant for wizards. Now be careful my boy because the way it works, well maybe you don't need to know how it works. It just works, anyway once you find a way to get in front of Strahd. And Eno do not give him the pipe and ask him if he wants to smoke it, as a matter of fact you shouldn't smoke it either. Just light the pipe, like a beacon on a watchtower. Let the magics do the rest. Fisbon mumbled something to someone Tars and Astrid couldn't see in the fishbowl distorted starry depths of the Vistani Seer crystal off, to the side. Let's hope it doesn't blink him off to Akron or Avrunus. DM's note. The pipe of antidiluvian knowledge is a magic artifact that works kind of like the machine Darkseed had that Batman used to ask the true identity of the Joker, and it answered back with which one? There are three foot this artifact works similar. A person within a NY game world or realm can ask a single question about anything and get a definite answer. The only downside is if you inhale and fail a save versus spell, as per DM's choice, fail the check and your PC instantly goes insane, loses all cognitive stats and becomes a vegetable. Antidiluvian, as I understand it, is a term meaning a before the flood, or a colloquial term suggesting Stone Age history going back to the roots of all time and space for the answers. Tars doesn't smoke, he never smoked. The pipe is literally used at this point as a plot device to figure out how Fisbon managed to locate Tars, after being thrown into Sigil by Strahd, but Fisbon now has a challenge on his hands. Taking a Kender. Outside the bounds of Crin space has adverse effects. Tars is dying and unless. Fisbon finds a way to sustain the poor Kender's life, his brains will leak out into his shoes. Tasselhorf, please don't let go. Tika, then it was a Strid's face appeared in the puddle crying at him. Was she upset he took her cookie jar? No, she's upset because you're hurt, you idiot. Look at you. You made a Strid cry too. You let Raistlin kill Ticklemop. Pez might wanna punch you in the mouth for upsetting a Strid. Oh dear. 
Put that back. Don't let go. Tars thought of indignantly arguing with the fevered apparitions of his former companion's voices, but something felt awfully wrong like he was slowly losing himself and turning into a puddle himself and it would slide down into the cobbles and dribble down into the depths of Undersigil. You've done it now, Fisburn. Fisburn? That's not a name, you silly old fool. How dare you embarrass me? Would I proclaim to the other powers of the multiverse and the planes? My adversary and eternal nemesis is a befuddled old wizard who loses his memory and does good to keep from shitting his own robes. This is the ultimate insult. You have trapped me along with you within the city of doors. I hate you. I had no desire to come here, yet you drag me along. To what end and purpose, you old fool? Do you not know this is where Ioska was destroyed and sundered? We are not as so confident within our own realm to be seeking an audience for our conflict among the denizens of the plains. You know as well as I, W.E. do not rule here. I have to get him out of here. This time Tars heard a voice. It really was Fisburn, only this time he was talking all serious and not like a befuddled old wizard anymore. I'll find you later, not that I want to again. Tars felt arms pick him up off the cobbles but at this point he felt himself go slightly even weaker, as he struggled to focus on the person Fisburn was talking to in the alleyway because it was now raining. So hard he struggled to hear what was being said, and the rain was coming down so hard Tars found it hard to look up because this rain smelled nasty like it had been sitting in the puddle, and it was falling so hard it was stinging his eyes and ears and falling into his mouth and making it difficult for him to speak. Your arbiter of justice is most likely in the hands of the Abishai or the Mercicillers now. I don't care what filthy up to no good business you choose to get up to on your own. Times, you're as much to blame as me. I have to get this little one somewhere. Safe. Safe. In Sigil. The voice mocked him. The Lady of Pain knows well who crosses into her domain Paladine, you have no more power here than I. You are weak here, defenseless. A mere petitioner who travels the plains could best you now without even the slightest clue of who you are. You simple silly old fool. Do you think the highest of the elder gods would care about our squabbles now? Soth and Strahd now locked in an indecisive struggle as the nebula seeks to engulf the planet that I helped create and one which I will retain rule of again. You've done us no favors? That remains to be seen, don't you chide me with your abrasive tone tachesis, you're as much in the soup as I am with this one. Go find your arbiter, and then we can get back to our respective circles in peace. Fool, do you think this will be that simple? As we speak legions of Cornugans and Lemma and Bartezu. They smelled our arrival. They may not see to attack me, after all I am important in the blood war, but you and the Kender, well. What do I care if they soon eviscerate you and drag you back to Karchery as a trophy? I will subtly slip away and find my way back to Krynn and leave you to deal with all of them. Fisburn. Tars looked up at the old wizard cradled in his arms. Where are we? It's good to see you, but I'm. Tars coughed. Something is wrong. The Kender held his own hand up to look at it, he could literally see through himself. The Kender looked at his own chest and there he could see this bright glowing green and blue light coming off his whole body, but it was like it was being drawn away, like pieces of himself were falling away and drifting like smoke into the air, and off into the weirdest looking sky Tars had ever seen still somewhat confused about where he was. He was growing weaker by the second, and he looked again to see more of himself blowing away like dust in a breeze. Fisburn, help me! His essence is weakening, the Grey Gem cannot sustain their mortal coils outside Krynn, you knew that. Let's be clear, Fisburn huffed. I'm not doing this to help you, you old shrew. You've got your own challenge ahead of you. If they drag you off to Karchery or Avernus to await trial or if the lady mazes you, I'll have to find some bashers to get you out. And who even says I'd even want to? Go find your arbiter Raistlin Magia they've most likely tossed him somewhere it's more applicable to suit his alignment these days. You better be glad we didn't pop out at the Godsmen foundry. You'd be sitting in celestial chains right now on your way to be judged and done away forthright.
Don't you chastise me, you old fool. Go and attend to this pathetic creature whilst I gather more information, you have me at an impasse, old man. I only pursue this as it is my control at stake, we are not allies, I care nothing for you, ever, but I will not let Strad or Soth usurp my rule, and destroy Krynn with no indication of understanding the power to rule over a planet and not ultimately destroy it. I want subservience and obedience, not oblivion. I want order and chaos balance to my whims alone. I will not not lose to a whelp, this Strad. To think a mortal could best me, even one that thought he had transcended the bounds of time and mortality. Tars felt the venom drip out of the queen's voice, and he ultimately knew for Takasis it wasn't about absolving what was right. It was about absolute retribution for defying her and taking advantage of Sotha's madness in Scythicus to destabilize the Furies and wreak havoc among the lower realms. Fisben, Tars suddenly felt his vision swim and started to lose consciousness. You shrew, Fisben fumed. If this little one goes right now, so do you. A moment for the reply. Someone in this city has the means to sustain him long enough to get us home, think of someone besides yourself for a change, wouldn't you? To the casual observer one would view this as Takasis and Paladine having an argument, while the little kid that Tars can do little more than sit and listen to them sling barbs at each other. A perfect allegory for some people's experience in life with estranged family. Fall from grace. The dragon shadow Fisben was conversing with melted its form to Silahet as a woman. Find a sensate among the many wards of Sigil, a succubi, fall from grace. If you must, she can help this creature. I would not. I'm glad it's not up you, you old shrew. What in the holy hell are you doing here? For spite he said holy gun knowing Takasis would have bristles him for doing so with a mere thought. Tars coughed weakly and then really started breathing heavy when he saw more of his ascents falling away. A sharp pain in his temples reassured him that was not the right thing to say to. Takasis. Despite this as if one cue an ominous howl of something far off in the distance indicated it was time to leave the immediate area. Fisben, not to be impatient here. Tars looked up as Fisben was already carrying him and heading out of the alley. Fiends and others are aware you are here now, go, I will deal with what comes this way. Begone Fisben, seek out the order of sensates here in Sigil. Until then I shall dwell on another strategy to leave this place, we have no business here. I do not wish to be here, let me make this known to you. Don't you worry Tasselhorf Burfoot, Fisben assured him wearily. Something in his tone sounded like he wasn't so sure this time. We'll fare better here than she ever could. She has to be behave here, she doesn't get to do what she wants, this isn't K-R-Y-N-N. Don't you know that irritates her to no end? You'll see some of Sigil my boy, but first we need to get you somewhere your brains don't dribble out into your shoes. There are these big nasty winged demons. Demons. Tars weakly brightened at the prospect of at least seeing some demons. What kind of demons? Never you mind, Fisben snapped. Those Abishai will drink your essence down like a tankard of ale and then pop your glowing yoke like a grape into its mouth and swallow it like a head of foam off your beer. That's not going to happen on my watch, but we must not tarry, now if I can just remember the layout of this place. It's been literally eons since I walked the streets of Sigil. Fisben can't find his hat half the time, and now his avatar is stuck, in Sigil. I'm worried, Tars said. Mom's gonna be real mad at me that I let Raistlin kill Ticklemop, plus Astrid even if she's safe with Tannis and Larana won't forgive me for not bringing her along. You've got bigger fish to fry, Fisben wheezed as he shouldered the kender and kept moving. Don't you go all limp dead boned fish on me. Tars looked up one last time into the sky before he passed out, he remarked that it almost looked like the lights. He was looking at on closer inspection were coming from the houses and dwellings, above their heads, like the city was looming around them. This place is hard enough to navigate as it is, I've not been to Sigil in eons. Remember Burfoot, it's pronounced like Sigil, rhymes with giggle, and woe be the Burke who mistakenly mispronounces it in front of the Gunvners. Welcome to Sigil, city of doors, most of them are locked, but they didn't exactly have Kender in mind when they built the place. 
or maybe they did which is why you're probably the first kender to ever been inside the cage and not be immediately whisked out. Problem is you're from KRYNN and that grey gem is the only reason you exist. All your sand in your hourglass is blowing away so to speak and we need to stop that immediately. I just hope I can remember where those sensates are. Alright guys, yeah I kind of fucked up there and forgot to hit the wrong, I, I muted the wrong fucking, I muted the stream instead of the main microphone, so I probably need to run that again, one back, just slightly back a little bit, I'll run it again for you, there's no problem with that, let me do the second one first, and then I'll run it again, that way I can go ahead and edit that, okay, let's uh, do this uh, second one here guys, okay. Um, I'll go back and check it. Ain't no problem with that. And I'll run that one again, just for good measure. Okay? All right. Uh, hold on just a second here. All right. Let me take a real quick... Let me get this ready here, guys. Hold on just a second. Oh, by the way, the new Dragonlance book coming out. August 6, 2024. Dragons of Attorney. So there you go, Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman. That's my little tip of the hat to you all. Uh, according to Twitter, Margaret Weiss said that she will be at Gen Con. Uh, they're supposed to be uh, under uh, Random House Worlds selling books. So, like I said, go give it a look. Um, I'm unable to attend, unfortunately. But uh, hold on just a second here, guys. Let me get everything situated again. I just got to remember not to mute the stream. I muted the stream instead of my fucking main mic audio. Okay, guys. After they've been in Sigil a while, all right, uh, Taz actually gets a blue gem put in his chest, okay? It's to stop his essence from getting away because, see, Kenders aren't supposed to be in Sigil, all right? We're still working on that. Anyways, uh, take a look at this part. Have you not seen it within their eyes, Paladine? Oh, I refuse to call you Fisben, an insipid name for your foolish mortal shell you use. Paladine. Do you not remember me? Answer me. Are you listening? Not if I can help it. Fisben blustered looking warily around himself uneasily as he walked along the cobbles. She thinks we're on a picnic, Fisben instantly whirled to square up on Takis's avatar. So much as his physical avatar could being a scrawny old man trying to size up to a powerfully built Amazon of a woman standing at least seven feet tall. Or rather she seems that way with the fan of luminescent dragons behind her head that snapped and hissed and phased in. And out around her as if it wasn't there, Tars thought their arguing reminded him of an estranged old couple, kind of like when Kaamon and Tika fought, but something else much colder and long lost like if Tika had smashed Kaamon over the head with a frying pan and joined Kitiara and left solace for good. That kind of simmering long-standing hate for a love long lost and gone. Tars wouldn't test the wager but Takasis had thighs that would crush Caraman's head like a walnut, poor Fisben. Wouldn't stand a chance if they decided to actually wrestle in those forms. I try to forget as much that ever comes out of your mouth Takasis, but I don't have time for silly games. I don't know who this fellow paladin is, but I'm sorry he stood you up, Maybe it was for the better. My name is Fisben the Fabulous and I'm on my way to. Fisben turned to Tars again and not finding him started rambling to a Dabas who looked at him quizzically with a string of floating rebuses and then turned away uninterested to Fisben's rambling only to float several feet away to a ledge above the street to an obvious duty. It was assigned repairing a window. Burfoot, Fisben snapped again. Dig out that map. Amnesia. 
Tars muttered to himself. That's what fall from grace meant about you immortals, amnesia which is what it's called when you forget things a lot. Tars nodded to himself now. It makes sense what that Githsarai Dakan told me about traveling with the scarred man. He forgot each life he lived due to break of the mortal coil, retaining but a shadow of a former life each time he arose. Of course you wouldn't, fool. All men with their desires, when their ambitions fail they all turn inward. For I exploit that love that is lost or denied for as it was denied to me. Broken men of ambition turn to burning hate and revenge sought for the love once lost or denied. Soth and Strad. Fool. Do you not understand the brokenness and the madness of their inevitable evil was not something I created within them. I only compelled them to embrace it, for it was the jealousy and the hate for the love and desire I lost. Takasis fumed and folded her arms, pausing in the street but still not bothering to use her immortal avatar's body to physically speak. She was annoyed that the kendo was even tagging along, but here she was like an angry girlfriend or ex finally confronting Paladine about her problems. The kendo looked up at the avatars of Fisban and Takasis standing in the periodically raining, then foggy, then misty, then sunny street of Sigil's rapidly changing bazaar alleyways pausing only momentarily to apologize to an irritated barrier he had absent-mindingly bumped into, and received a harsh clop of the hoof on his ankle and a sharp to watch it burk. Two legs little one not see me here, eh? Wait! Never seen one of you, what prime are you from let me guess? I'm a kender, Tars said pausing only momentarily to make sure his blue jewel wasn't showing out here else Fisban said the Abishai lookouts might see it and go squealing back to someone he was outside again. Don't mind them, they're just old fiends, I mean friends. Them? The Barira looked dubiously at Takasis and Fisban. What would a beautiful alluring thing like that want with him? Tars looked at the Barrier and shrugged, but he completely agreed on that notion. He wasn't sure if the barrier was aware this was Takasis standing out in the middle of Sigil streets, but both a lemma, and an Abishai had walked past him a few seconds ago so if a pit fiend from the lower hells wouldn't do much to startle him, neither would a deity from Kryynn. I'm no expert on love, Tars said looking around the stalls as he walked and he suddenly spied an exotic flower stall, a lady on a floating. Divan would miraculously produce a flower of any shape, size or description merely by thinking about it, and conjuring it into being. But I'm certain that when you don't have anything to break the ice of a cold heart, sometimes a flower might work. Tar stopped and got the ladies. Attention although this floating lady sold flowers and it was okay to get her attention versus the other lady who would either maze you to be infinitely bored which when implied to a kender held considerable weight as a deterrent. Fisban, give the lady a flower. Tars turned to the lady who immediately produced a single non-bloomed black rose. Tars handed it to the wizard who befuddingly took it and stared at it with disregard. Very pretty but I don't want it. No dummy. Tell her you're sorry. Tars whispered certain that Takasis wasn't paying any attention to him instead preferring to stand motionless as the dragons around her. Human torso snapped and hissed while she angrily looked away in disgust to stare up at Sigil's now changing anti-peak to a darker shade. At once the black rose bloomed right after Tasselhoff handed it to Fisban. With this black rose I bequeath to thee, our estranged love now lost I urge to set him free, to erase the sorrow and damage done. This black rose I bequeath you one, to remember the pain of the love I once lost, to die on the vine like the killing winter frost. This black rose I bequeath to thee, now I ask Takasis please set him free, the man and his mortal weakness, which caused so much pain. I'll forget it all but it won't be in vain, I'll even forget about you but you'll still. Remain the love of my heart, the love that is now lost, the love that died on the vine like the killing winter frost. From jealousy and pride how men can be so vain to have what they want and still cause so much pain. So this black rose Takasis my queen of darkness I give to thee, but as vain as you are, you'll never forget about me. What y'all think about that? Not bad, huh? Okay, um, there's actually some more to it. Um, well, basically what we've got in store here is uh, Takesis and Paladin and Sigil. Now, 
eventually uh, they have to figure out some way to petition the old gods to uh, release Lord Soth from his penance. Okay, the only way they can really do that and reverse it is to, to set him free is to petition the old gods. Takisa ain't too keen on that. And um, basically, Takisa gets herself mazed on purpose. And while she's there, she basically attempts to, co to contact the dead form of the exiled god Azokar. Yeah. So, there you go. Alright, we're gonna... Let's see here. Um, okay. Guys, I'm gonna run you... I'm going to run that first one here again here in just a little bit. Let me run you one more for context. I'm going to run that one with uh, Rival and Taz. Um, um, if you want to, guys, take this and play the uh, opening, the, the Planescape soundtrack for it for Ambiance, if that helps out. Okay, hold on just a second here, guys. Let me pull up something else here. Okay. Just a second. Bear with me. Okay. I'd actually ran this one originally on the Stride uh, versus Raceland one. But I'll go ahead and run it again. It was just a couple of pages anyway. Okay. Let me do, 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 do. Yep. All right. Okay, I'm going to run it in a different voice this time. Nah, fuck it. I'll go ahead and play it in the regular one. Alright, uh, I'm guessing. It's rolling. Piss on it. Should we play it in a different voice this time? I guess so. Hold on a minute. I don't even remember how to do that. Oh shit, I can't. I remember. The Night Hag, known as Ravel, took one look at Tars and immediately shrieked and scampered behind a gnarled tree that suddenly appeared to rudely block their path. Away with ye! The Hells! A I E E E E! A horrified ear splitting shriek of desperation and confusion echoed through the rustling maze of Razor Vine. Akenda! No! What trickery is this to mock me? Hide and it may go away to another part of the maze, let it picks what it wants to put in its filthy pockets here, he he he. No. Ravel knows Kenda takes things away and don't put them back, they find things hidden away, they find keys, they blabber and squeal all the secrets and the lady doesn't like the squealing of the secrets no more than when Ravel asked the question. What can change the nature of a man? Yeah. Blah blah blah. Tars interrupted. Forgive me, I'm sorry we are kind of in a hurry because our planet is about to get swallowed up in the astral plane into like the negative planes, down here, but the problem is that it washes a lot of garbage in that you lower fiends aren't going to like so it makes it kind of annoying for everyone. Fisbon was of no help as he couldn't cast a spell because he couldn't talk, and could only make grumbling noises and approving or disapproving eyebrow waggles. It was almost as fun as trying to converse with the Dabas in Sigil. But like everything else Tars had absolutely no time at all to stop and enjoy anything. Ekeek. Away with ye. Away I say, the old gods torment me so by sending back to this maze to be reborn and die and I be thrice damned again. Away with ye. This little bastard will break the ties of all creation itself if you let it. Akenda. Not in eons has I seen such the little vermin. Never before had they ever been able to get within a sneeze of Sigil before being whisked out. Yet I seize one. Ravel shrieked again and lobbed another clod of dirt at Fisbon, before turning into an extremely ugly ball-like creature with tusks to dash away into the rapidly congealing overgrowth of her maze. Hey! Tars shouted. Fisbon lost his hat and we aren't leaving until you. Tell us where to find Takisis. Tars turned to Fisbon. I mean, are you sure we want to find her again? She's rude. You clearly don't agree with each other, but you have to tolerate each other because she's part of you and me and everything like fall from grace said. 
Fisben just sternly nodded and pointed at the top of his head to indicate his hat was still missing and he couldn't talk. You come back here. Tars yelled as the night hag squealed in defeated rage as the razor vine held her fast with her snout poking out just enough to hiss and spitter. Few curses at the kender long enough for him to get his new magical hoop pack around her tusk and politely drag her out of the brush. Ravel assumed her normal form and hissed again, shoving the kender's hoop pack away pausing only to squeal in protest and shock when it zapped her nose. The popping and smoking accentuated her growling, as she irritably sought to keep her back turned just enough to the kender to not look at the magic mirror he had concealed in his right hand. Blast ye infernal kender ye little shits, unbanishable ye be, had it been a kender vessel I'd done that on. No not even Ravel would make such a thing possible. No. No. Unstable, the light from their little souls useful, but not here. Very unwise to let a kender loose among the plains. They unlock and unbind things. They are a bane to the evils and the powers alike. A chaotic element. I already heard that too. Tar sighed. Trust me Dakin is a githsaray and is a much better person to ask on the subject about chaos and limbo. We already stopped by the Hall of Sensation, so if you please. Demand a boon of me. Ravel shrieked, and what be with ye have that would bargain for my help, if ye heard the tale. For lack of time, Tars irritably fumbled in his pouches and came up with a neatly folded cubed brick wrapped in paper and covered in cloth. It was a piece of raw Kenderpack star. Try this. Ravel dubiously reached over and sniffed at the thing Tars waved in front of her. She snatched it out of the air as he dropped it and stepped away from her. This? Ravel sniffed the dense packed cubed brick of dough and immediately gobbled it noisily. A treat? Yes. A recipe from long ago. Ravel's tone turned quite appeasing albeit still growling. Chunks dribbled off her tusks as she chewed noisily. She picked a few remaining chunks here and there pausing only to lick her talons with a filthy tongue. This is quite sweet, oh, long ago tales of hiding in the forests. Sweet bread cooking. Children asleep in the cottage as their mothers shut the shades to the howling wind outside. A night ride on my mare, riding on the night winds, smelling the sweet bread cooking on the fall wind as I spot a wee one lingering in the firelight of a field. Lost little ones left by their parents, a few crumbs, and I lead them to my gingerbread house. Ravel chewed the kender pack and swallowed the cube with a sickening gulp down her maw. Such sweet morsels, such sweet sweet, bread. Hey! Tars shook his head when Fisben irritably nudged him to snap out of it as he knew sitting, and getting absorbed listening to Ravel's sparey stories would be his undoing, because she would trick him for all eternity into listening to a stupid story. A kender's one true weakness. You just stuffed your face with food by which standards according to the mazes you should not be able to have so therefore you must help assist Fisben. And I find Takisis to us which we will leave this place. W.E. go back to the prime and get to back wastes and do whatever night hags do. Doesn't that sound like fun? Ever, why not start with a more deserving person, you? Me. The night hag looked at him suspiciously. You lie? I'm not a fiend. How dare you? Tars snapped irritably. I know fiends are supposed to tell lies and untruths, but I will have you know that by the powers invested in me by the wards of Sigil, and the backup guarantee of the two most powerful parents on KRYNN, my word as a Burfoot and as a Kender is solid. Right, Fisben? You get to get out of this maze and go back to the Grey Waste, and let's be very clear ONLY the Grey Waste. Not lameish or flotsam. You also can't go to Torrell, asterisk Fisben, what is Torrell? I saw this map when we were in the Clark's ward it had this world. Fisben clapped his hand over Tar's mouth to stop him from saying too much. The. Kender irritably shooed him away. I know you can't talk right now Fisben, but you have to let me handle this. Let me do this. I can get us out of here and back home. You gotta know how to talk to these people. Strad was a bully. Verminaird was a bully. Tars gestured toward Ravel. She's just a cranky bored old hag, she doesn't get any candy or anything. She doesn't have any boyfriends to visit her with flowers like Takasis does.
Okay, that's where basically that came from. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, hold on just a second here. We'll take a real quick break. And uh, <coughs> go get you something to drink. Use bathroom. We'll do what you got to do. And uh, we'll be right back. I'm going to run that uh, first one one more time. Uh, I think I'm going to change the voice on it, though. Okay? But uh, we'll go ahead and run it one more time. Uh, you guys are more than welcome to use segments of this if you need to recut it, whatever. You know, whatever you need to do for it. It's OGL content anyway. I don't care. All right. Let's see here. Um, oh, sorry. see what I can get on here first. Hold on just a second here, guys. Uh, I want a different voice. Todd. Hold on just a second here, guys. I'm going to try it with... Uh, let's hold tight for a second, guys. Find it first. Oh boy. Uh, Let's see if he Dutch. Dean and Finna. There we go. There we go. Alright. Alright, guys. Hold on just a second here. Let's make sure everything's set here. Okay. Uh, I'm believing it was up and ready to rock and roll, so we'll just go ahead and roll with that. Okay. All right, hold on just a second here, guys. Let me get it ready. All right. Tas, don't let go. Tanis voice, then Laurana, the flint, then Karamon, then Tika, then Kitiara, then Reestlin, then Astrid, then finally his mother Volo and even Burfoot too. All of their voices said the same thing. Don't let go. I'm trying, I'm okay really. Oh my, I feel a little bit queer and not at all alright just now. Taslehoff squeaked, but the obvious was far from okay. I had this dream once, really bad dream in Tarsis. Sylvanesti. Wait I never went to Sylvanesti did I? It was haunted, Taika she fell, I was opening a lock. I got in a hurry and this pin went in my finger. It didn't hurt, but then it did and I felt my heart doing just like it's doing now. Oh, dear. Taz blinked and quizzically thought to himself how he could possibly let go of anything because he really wasn't holding on to anything in the first place. That insinuation also galled him because his companions over the decades had constantly shouted at him, Taz, let go of that. Taz, put that down. Taz, put that back. So much that it was normal conversation for every human or demi-human that wasn't a kender to regard him with at least every five minutes in a conversation no matter what he was doing. At this present time he wasn't doing anything but lying on his side on a cobbled street, only this street cobble felt weird to the touch like it was vibrating ever so slightly and it was warm, but the surrounding area around him wasn't, it was raining heavily. He was laying flat on his face staring into a large puddle of water, the reflections of two figures standing over him, but they weren't. The ones telling him to hold on or not let go, no, they were having a very intense and heated but subtly quiet argument, and regardless of whether Tasselhoff felt like his brains were leaking out into his shoes, there was no indication they gave brain vermin's arse about his condition. He tilted his head to notice he was in an alleyway and across that he could see what looked like a street, all going uphill, it even felt like the ground he was lying on was on an incline oddly enough, the puddle in front of him wasn't on flat ground either, but it was full of standing water and wasn't emptying at that angle. How could that be possible if everything is slightly going uphill? There were cobbles to indicate a street, 
the place stunk like an alleyway maybe he was in a city somewhere. Any place was better than Strat's castle, Tas could honestly say he never wanted to go back to that stuffy arrogant bully's home anytime soon if he could avoid it. He'd never detested a human so much in his life. What a lying piece of refuse. Wait, oh dear. Fispen was going to be irritated that Tas had accidentally snapped the stem off of Halfling's pipe that he'd borrowed from Uncle Trapspringer even though it was originally meant as a gift for Fispen. Tas had just forgotten until he'd been reminded in Magdus Vistani camp that he had it and too. Light the beacon, my boy. I'll be able to see it sure enough from where I am. I can't do much here to bring you home, you've got one portal key, that Raistlin fellow is bad news don't expect him to help you out, that's not really his job or concern at this point but he's the only other person that can get you out of there if he's inclined to do so. Once you've found Tannis and Lorana, get out of there as quick as you can. You might not be able to save Ticklemop. She liked that nasty dwarf Asral have been corrupted by the negative planes and have been in Sithicus far too long. That holy sack tied with reins will work but she will most likely try to kill you, no, spare the grief and end her torment if you must. That creature's own hoopak you possess is enough to end her torment. That poor creature, I regret it so. I let it wander lost into the mists of Ravenloft. I failed, I am so sorry. Ticklemop. Taslehoff, you must understand she can only be free of Barovia if her chain is severed. She's trapped, she wanted to go home. Straat lied to her. Saf lied to her. The mists of Ravenloft hold ye in their cold talons, I don't feel so worried since you kenders are immune to fear. And it's one tool that big bully von Zarovich thinks he can use on unwary travelers from MY neck of the woods, HMMPH. We'll show him, but first things first we must attempt to bring you home, that pipe. This pipe? Taz asked sheepishly. Oh I am so sorry Fisben, Uncle Trapspringer said I was supposed to give this to you after we found it in the chest we finally dug up from the spelljammer's wreckage. I wasn't going to sell it or give it away, Fisben, I don't even smoke. Never mind that, that thing is called a pipe of antediluvian knowledge. It's a very powerful artifact, not usually for kender, it's meant for wizards. Now be careful my boy because the way it works, well maybe you don't need to know how it works. It just works, anyway once you find a way to get in front of Strad, and N.O. do not give him the pipe and ask him if he wants to smoke it, as a matter of fact you shouldn't smoke it either, just light the pipe, like a beacon on a watchtower. Let the magic do the rest. Fispen mumbled something to someone Tas and Astrid couldn't see in the fishbowl distorted starry depths of the Vistani seer crystal off to the side. Let's hope it doesn't blink him off to Acheron or a furnace. DM's note the pipe of antediluvian knowledge is a magic artifact that works kind of like the machine Darkseid had that Batman used to ask the true identity of the Joker and it answered back with which one? There are three, this artifact works similar, a person within any game world or realm can ask a single question about anything and get a definite answer, the only downside is if you inhale and fail a save versus spell, as per DM's choice, Fail the check and your PC instantly goes insane loses all cognitive stats and becomes a vegetable. Antediluvian as I understand it is a term meaning before the flood or a colloquial term suggesting Stone Age history going back to the roots of all time and space for the answers. Taz doesn't smoke, he never smoked. The pipe is literally used at this point as a plot device to figure out how Fispe managed to locate Taz after being thrown into Sigil by Strad but Fisbon now has a challenge on his hands. Taking a kender. Outside the bounds of Krein space has adverse affects. Taz is dying unless. Fisbon finds a way to sustain the poor kender's life, his brains will leak out into his shoes. Taslehof, please don't let go. Tika, then it was Astrid's face appeared in the puddle crying at him, was she upset he took her cookie jar? 
No, she's upset because you're hurt, you idiot. Look at you. You made Astrid cry too, you let Raistling kill Ticklemop. Pess might wanna punch you in the mouth for upsetting Astrid, oh dear. Put that back, don't let go. Tas thought of indignantly arguing with the fevered apparitions of his former companions' voices, but something felt awfully wrong like he was slowly losing himself and turning into a puddle himself and it would slide down into the cobbles and dribble down into the depths of under sigil. You've done it now, Fisban. Fisban? That's not a name, you silly old fool. How dare you embarrass me? Would I proclaim to the other powers of the multiverse and the planes, my adversary and eternal nemesis is a befuddled old wizard who loses his memory and does good to keep from shitting his own robes. This is the ultimate insult. You have trapped me along with you within the city of doors. I hate you. I had no desire to come here, yet you drag me along? To what end and purpose you old fool? Do you not know this is where Aoskar was destroyed and sundered? We are not as so confident within our own realm to be seeking an audience for our conflict among the denizens of the plains, you know as well as I, we do not rule here. I have to get him out of here. This time Taz heard a voice. It really was Fispen, only this time he was talking all serious and not like a befuddled old wizard anymore. I'll find you later, not that I want to again. Taz felt arms pick him up off the cobbles but at this point he felt himself go slightly even weaker as he struggled to focus on the person Fispen was talking to in the alleyway because it was now raining so hard he struggled to hear what was being said. And the rain was coming down so hard Taz found it hard to look up because this rain smelled nasty like it had been sitting in the puddle and it was falling so hard it was stinging his eyes and ears and falling into his mouth and making it difficult for him to speak. Your arbiter of justice is most likely in the hands of the Abyss High or the Mercy Killers now. I don't care what filthy up to no good business you choose to get up to on your own. Times, you're as much to blame as me. I have to get this little one somewhere. Safe. Safe? In Sigil? The voice mocked him. The Lady of Pain knows well who crosses into her domain paladine. You have no more power here than I, you are weak here, defenseless. A mere petitioner who travels the plains could best you now without even the slightest clue of who you are. You simple silly old fool. Do you think the highest of the elder gods would care about our squabbles now? Soth and Strad now locked in an indecisive struggle as the nebula seeks to engulf the planet that I helped create and one which I will retain rule of again. You've done us no favors. That remains to be seen, don't you chide me with your abrasive tone, Takhesis, you're as much in the soup as I am with this one. Go find your arbiter and then we can get back to our respective circles in peace. Fool, do you think this will be that simple? As we speak legions of Cornugons and Lemure and Batesu. They smelled our arrival. They may not seek to attack me, after all I am important in the blood war, but you and the kender, well. What do I care if they soon eviscerate you and drag you back to Carceri as a trophy? I will subtly slip away and find my way back to Kryn, and leave you to deal with all of them. Fispan. Taz looked up at the old wizard cradled in his arms. Where are we? It's good to see you, but I'm. Taz coughed. Something is wrong. The kender held his own hand up to look at it, he could literally see through himself. The kender looked at his own chest and there he could see this bright glowing green and blue light coming off his whole body, but it was like it was being drawn away, like pieces of himself were falling away and drifting like smoke into the air and off into the weirdest looking sky Taz had ever seen still somewhat confused about where he was. He was growing weaker by the second, and he looked again to see more of himself blowing away like dust in a breeze. Fisban, help me. His essence is weakening, the Grey Gem cannot sustain their mortal coils outside Kryn, you knew that. Let's be clear, Fisban huffed. I'm not doing this to help you, you old shrew. 
you've got your own challenge ahead of you. If they drag you off to carcere or a furnace to await trial or if the lady mazes you, I'll have to find some bashers to get you out, and who even says I'd even want to. Go find your arbiter Raistlin Majir, they've most likely tossed him somewhere it's more applicable to suit his alignment these days, you better be glad we didn't pop out at the Godsman Foundry, you'd be sitting in celestial chains right now on your way to be judged and done away forthright. Don't you chastise me, you old fool. Go and attend to this pathetic creature whilst I gather more information, you have me at an impasse, old man. I only pursue this as it is my control at stake, we are not allies, I care nothing for you, ever, but I will not let Strad or Soth usurp my rule and destroy Kryn with no indication of understanding the power to rule over a planet and not ultimately destroy it. I want subservience and obedience, not oblivion. I want order and chaos balanced to my whims alone. I will not not lose to a whelp, this strat. To think a mortal could best me, even one that thought he had transcended the bounds of time and mortality. Tas felt the venom drip out of the queen's voice, and he ultimately knew for Tekisis it wasn't about absolving what was right, it was about absolute retribution for defying her and taking advantage of Soth's madness in Sithicus to destabilize the Furies and wreak havoc among the lower realms. Fisban, Tas suddenly felt his vision swim and started to lose consciousness. You shrew, Fisbon fumed. If this little one goes right now, so do you. A moment for the reply. Someone in this city has the means to sustain him long enough to get us home, think of someone besides yourself for a change, wouldn't you? To the casual observer one would view this as Takhesis and Paladine having an argument, while the little kid Tas can do little more than sit and listen to them sling barbs at each other. A perfect allegory for some people's experience in life with estranged family. Full from grace. The dragon's shadow, Fispen, was conversing with melted its form to Silohetta as a woman. Find a sensate among the many wards of Sigil, a succubi, full from grace. If you must, she can help this creature. I would not. I'm glad it's not up you, you old shrew. What in the holy hell are you doing here? For spite he said holy knowing Takhesis would bristle him for doing so with a mere thought. Tas coughed weakly and then really started breathing heavy when he saw more of his essence of falling away. A sharp pain in his temples reassured him that was not the right thing to say to. Takhesis. Despite this as if one cue an ominous howl of something far off in the distance indicated it was time to leave the immediate area. Fisban, not to be impatient here. Taz looked up as Fisban was already carrying him and heading out of the alley. Fiends and others are aware you are here now, go, I will deal with what comes this way. Begone Fisban, seek out the order of sensates here in Sigil. Until then I shall dwell on another strategy to leave this place, we have no business here. I do not wish to be here, let me make this known to you. Don't you worry Tasselhoff Burfoot, Fisben assured him wearily. Something in his tone sounded like he wasn't so sure this time. We'll fare better here than she ever could. She has to be behave here, she doesn't get to do what she wants, this isn't Kryn. Don't you know that irritates her to no end? You'll see some of Sigil my boy, but first we need to get you somewhere your brains don't dribble out into your shoes. There are these big nasty winged demons. Demons? Taz weakly brightened at the prospect of at least seeing some demons. What kind of demons? Never you mind, Fispen snapped. Those abyss high will drink your essence down like a tankard of ale and then pop your glowing yolk like a grape into its mouth and swallow it like a head of foam of your beer. That's not going to happen on my watch, but we must not tarry. Now if I can just remember the layout of this place. It's been literally eons since I walked the streets of Sigil. Fisbon can't find his hat half the time, and now his avatar is stuck, in Sigil? I'm worried, Tas said. Mom's gonna be real mad at me that I let Raistlin kill Ticklemop, 
Plus Astrid even if she's safe with Tanis and Laurana won't forgive me for not bringing her along. You've got bigger fish to fry, Fispen wheezed as he shouldered the kender and kept moving. Don't you go all limp that boned fish on me. Taz looked up one last time into the sky before he passed out. He remarked that it almost looked like the lights he was looking at on closer inspection were coming from the houses and dwellings, above their heads like the city was looming around them. This place is hard enough to navigate as it is, I've not been to Sigil in eons. Remember Burfoot, it's pronounced like Sigil, rhymes with giggle, and woe be the Burk who mistakenly mispronounces it in front of the governors. Welcome to Sigil, city of doors. Most of them are locked but they didn't exactly have Kender in mind when they built the place, or maybe they did which is why you're probably the first Kender to ever been inside the cage and not be immediately whisked out. Problem is you're from Kryn and that grey gem is the only reason you exist. All your sand in your hourglass is blowing away so to speak and we need to stop that immediately. I just hope I can remember where those sensates are. Pretty cool, huh, y'all? All right, guys. <clears throat> We've been rolling for about an hour. All right. Uh, take you real quick break. Uh, I want to thank uh, Red Dragon Wing, T-Sun, for following. Uh, that must have been last month, uh, or rather at the beginning of the month. So thank you again for... Okay. I don't know if it'll play it or show it, but it'll still... Let's see here. Yeah. Okay, well, well, alright. No, my Okay. Alright, guys. Let me flip over here for a minute. We're going to take a little bit of a break, and I'll be right back. <clears throat> um, I think I'll run, uh, I'll see what else I've got to uh, run on here. I'll see if I've got anything else pulled out. And uh, like I said, guys, this is the third Dragonlance book. It's coming out August 6, 2024. Uh, Margaret Weiss, as per Twitter, has said, or X, whatever you want to call the platform now, Elon's platform, okay? Um, of course, she said she's going back to Facebook. I don't have anything to do with Facebook, okay? I stopped using Facebook years ago, guys. So I take anything you see on Facebook with a grain of salt. Um, after that crap of the AI stuff, I'm gonna be like, nah. But anyway, what was I looking at? Oh, well, anyways, you can check Twitter, and look, I was going to repost that, but we'll take a break. All right, we'll be back in a second, guys. Okay, let's see here what we got rolling. Let's see here. I ought to do that thing for quantum viewing. I didn't think about that. Nah, I'll keep it for Dragonlance. I'm not worried about that. All right, uh, let's see here. Let me see what I can pull up here, guys. Um, good sucker bird. I already did that one. Um, I don't think we got any of this. No. No. I can't think of nothing right offhand. I'd have to reload that one. Ooh, I, yeah, I didn't even run that one out yet. Okay, well, we'll save that one for the Spelljammer one. Um, yeah, I've got one something else coming up too, guys. Um, I'll pull it up later. But, uh... Oh, shit. No, no, 
no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, stop, no, fuck off. I hate it when it fucking does that. Damn it. Hold on a minute, guys. Damn it. Shit. Wait a minute. Shit. Flipped it off the fucking tab was what I did. Okay, good. Alright. We're back to normal. Had to fucking switch my screen back. It fucked with me for a minute. I hate it when it does that. Alright, guys. Um. Yeah, we'll call that a wrap. We call that a wrap. Yep. We'll be, we call that a wrap. Alright, guys. Guys, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, like I said, uh, Dragonlance is not dead. I do a lot of AD&D 2E content. Uh, like I said, check out my other streams. If you're not familiar with my Burfoot audio project, it's an ongoing project. You'll just have to check out the audio streams for it. Um, yeah, a good portion of it has got uh, Planescape, it's got Ravenloft, it's got Dragonlance, it's got the whole shebang. I hit all the high marks. But... Uh, it mainly uses this, the uh, Ravenloft, when black roses bloom. Okay, so that's what that thing was a reference to. A black rose for a turquesis. Okay. Alright, guys. Like I said, go check out the new book uh, when it comes out. And we'll holler at you a little bit later. Thank you guys for tuning in. This is Engine Joe. Y'all roll on.